Now let's move on to three more of the higher orders. We're going to look at the uh, Megaloptera through the Neuroptera. So these are orders that you may or may not be familiar with. We do have quite a few here in Texas. Uh, they are all over the country, but they tend to be those types of insects that you may not notice because they're not in really large numbers or they're not uh, obvious and in your face and that sort of thing. So let's start with the Megaloptera. Uh, these are commonly known as Dobson flies or alder flies or fish flies. Okay, so Dobson flies flies, elder flies, or fish flies. These are relatively large insects. I mean, look at that um, aquatic larvae, naiad up there uh, on that hand. That's really, really large. Uh, the adults are also very big. Uh, they have these large, clear wings that they fold backwards over their abdomen. So you can see you've got these really big Pinch your mouth parts here, really large wings going on right down there. Okay, so relatively large insects. In general, they have these large mandibles or these strong mandibles that are adapted for chewing. Although there are many species that don't actually feed as adults. So when we're talking about the order level, we're going to say that they have mandibulate mouth parts. There are some uh, representative species, though, that don't feed at all, a lot like Ephemeroptera. The females, the females will lay thousands of eggs just in a single mass. And what she does is she goes and finds vegetation that overhangs fresh running water. So she'll lay these thousands of eggs in the single mass on this overhanging vegetation. The larvae are going to hatch out of those eggs and fall into that water. So they dwell in this fresh water for their entire larval period. Uh, the larvae will feed on aquatic insects, uh, that sort of thing. And they can take several years to develop. So it's a lot like Ephemeroptera, a lot like some of those other uh, water-dwelling organisms that take a long time in that uh, young stage, that undeveloped stage. They hang out in that water. They need fresh water in order to survive. The adults will live terrestrially around the uh, um, that fresh water, so they don't go very far. So if you end up seeing some of these uh, adults, then you will end up uh, being near some sort of water area. So it's it's close to fresh water, usually running water. All right, so that's Megaloptera. Up next, we got the Raphidioptera. These are commonly known as the snake flies. So they're very, very closely related to the Dobson flies, or to the elder flies, the fish flies, so that Megaloptera, and to this, the next order that we're going to be looking at, to the Neuroptera. So they're very, very closely related, these three organisms, or these three orders. And if you look at this snake fly, they look an awful lot like both of the groups. So looking here, here's the snake fly. They look like this Dobson fly and they look like this lacewing, right? So that's how we get that relationship. They look an awful lot, lot like uh, both of those groups. So the Raphidioptera are predatory organisms, both as adults and as the larvae. And they are characterized by this elongate prothoracic region. So looking again at this snake fly. So you've got your head, and then this whole thing here is the thorax. Remember that the wings are on the meso and the metathorax. So this first segment, this prothoracic region, look how long that is. So this is what gives them that name, snake fly. Okay? They have an elongate prothorax, which gives them that snake-like look. Okay, So they... Um, called the snake flies, the females have these very, very long ovipositors. You can also see that in this picture. So look way back here. So look at that. Nice, long, sclerotized ovipositor. Looks a heck of a lot like a stinger. Good news is these things don't really sting you. So the females have these long ovipositors. They're very flexible. They use them to deposit their eggs into crevices in bark or in rotting wood. So that's where we find the larvae. So the larvae have these really large mandibles. And they have this adhesive organ on their abdomen. This allows them to uh, fasten themselves onto vertical surfaces. So they can just glue themselves onto these vertical surfaces uh, in order to find their prey. So both the larvae and the adults are predatory. However, they can only capture and kill very, very weak 
prey. So the larvae will specialize on feeding on eggs and other larvae of various insects, um, maybe some, so some soft-bodied or small arthropods. The adults typically are going to feed on aphids. I mean, those are small, soft-bodied organisms, but they can eat a wide variety of arthropods, provided they can kill them, provided they can catch them. So these things aren't super, super fast, but they are predators. Now, the Neuroptera. So the Neuroptera, uh, this is, these are the lace wings. Uh, neuron means nerve or sinew, while terra means wings. And so this speaks to the nerve-like patterns that you find on these Neuropteran wings. So look at this. They have these clear wings with all these crazy, very, very thin patterns going through. It looks like nerve branches, okay? Hence the name Neuroptera. <clears throat> now, the adults have these uh, two pairs of membranous wings, that extensive patterning of, of uh, cross veins, and the adults tend to be green or brown. In this area, I've seen primarily green lace wings or primarily green neuroptera, although the brown ones do come out at night every once in a while, uh, but these will flutter around your lights at night. So if you leave your porch light on, especially in the uh, mid to late spring, early summer when it's not too terribly hot, it's nice out there, everything's growing, you're going to see these green, uh, crazy fly-in looking things fluttering around your uh, porch light and their their wings look huge when they're flying and they all kind of look like they're moving separately and it looks really weird the way that they fly those are the neuroptera so do that later uh this spring see if you can uh, capture some of these neuroptera or at least observe some of these neuroptera now the neuroptera used to include these previous two orders the megaloptera and the raphidioptera i mean look how close both of those organisms look in a morphology to the lace wings they've all got sort of these elongate thin bodies they've got these neuron like wings especially look at the raphidioptera there they have almost exactly the same wings as the lace wings maybe some different patterning on those wings but they're clear with that extensive patterning and the uh, uh, megaloptera have the same basic mouth parts the same basic body form they just hold their wings slightly differently so for a long time we grouped all three of these under the full umbrella of Neuroptera. Then as we got a little bit better at morphology, as we got a little bit better at DNA sequencing, and uh, we were looking at their environment, they have significantly different environments, significantly different behaviors, significantly different DNA sequences. So we ended up breaking these up. But this is why I keep harping on you about how uh, names are going to change. As we get more information, names are going to change. In fact, you may take a class where these are still under Neuroptera, or you may take a class where they have broken up Neuroptera even further. For the purposes of this class, these are the orders that I want you to know. This is what we're going to find in this area and what you're likely to see in your practices in the future or when you're wandering around outside. So, okay, keep that in mind. Now, on to the Neuroptera. The females are going to lay her eggs in the environment, and those eggs are going to sit atop these, these slender silken stalks like that. Okay? So they got all these stalks that the eggs sit on. A lot like, you remember with the uh, uh, the Calembola that put the, the males will put their spermatophore on these uh, silken stalks. In this case, the females lay their eggs on these silken stalks. So she lays these eggs on these silken stalks and these, these eggs will sit on top, just sort of sticking out. Now, this is something that you will see around here. Um, every year I will get Neuropterans laying their eggs on my front door. So you'll get this little line or this little circle or this sort of weird zigzag of these silken stalks with eggs on top of it. Or if I leave my uh, car windows open in the evening. These uh, I'll find these on the inside of my windshield oftentimes. And it's just neuropteran eggs. It's lacewing eggs. So keep an eye out for that this spring. You may end up seeing a whole bunch of these things everywhere. And they're everywhere when you start looking for them. And people, what the heck are those things? It's neuroptera. Okay. So they lay these eggs on these um, on these stalks, these uh, larvae will ha hatch out, and the larvae have specialized mouth parts that have these large sickle-shaped mandibles and maxillae. So these huge mandibles and maxillae that will interlock to form pinchers. So they have crazy, crazy, scary mouth parts. These larvae are predators. 
So they will feed primarily on soft-bodied insects. Again, you know, if you think about the Megaloptera and the Raphidioptera, both of those are predators. But the Neuropterans are the most voracious, the most scary of those predators. The way that the, the larvae feed is they will come upon these soft-bodied insects, things like aphids or um, mealybugs or those, those types of plant feeders that you see taking over your roses or taking over your plants. Right? So they will get on these uh, soft-bodied insects. They will impact pale those soft-bodied insects on their pinchers and then they sort of macerate them. They, they mash them a little bit so that the body contents are sucked through these hollow food channels running between the adjacent surfaces of the mandibles and the maxillae. Brutal. So they basically impale them and suck out their insides, suck out all of that um, hemolymph from their prey. Now, some lacewing uh, larvae are so brutal that they will camouflage themselves from potential prey by taking the bodies, the, the, the desiccated, sucked dry bodies of their previous prey and attaching it to their, um, their spines on their back, on their dorsal surface. So the larvae will suck out the blood of, say, aphids and then take that aphid body and impale it on spines on their thorax and on their abdomen. That way they just look like these big piles of aphids walking around. So potential prey don't really notice. Ah, hardcore. Okay, so <laughs> neuropterin are metal. So the larvae will do that camouflage um, and they are interesting in their internal anatomy. So as uh, this young stage, the neuropterans do not have a complete digestive system. So this goes along with their predatory habitat. They're living among their prey. They don't want to be leaving all of this oh, you know, fecal matter or other things to alert their prey that they are around. So instead, they do not have a hindgut. So the midgut will end at a dead end. So you don't have that anus, you don't have the rectum, you don't have the hindgut, you don't have any of that. All of the waste materials are going to collect in the midgut throughout larval development. So as they are feeding, they do they do their normal digestion. Those um, that stuff collects in the midgut and then it's expelled once they mature. So during that last larval molt, um, they will get rid of all of that uh, uh, waste product with that final uh, you know, shedding of the exoskeleton. And then when they're adults, they have a full digestive system. They have the hindgut that they've newly formed. Now, lace wings are used as biological control. So they can feed just voraciously on things like aphids, mealybugs, other plant feeders, like I said. Uh, so they're considered beneficial insects. There are some programs that will release lace wings out into the field, out into your garden, in order to get rid of these bad bugs. You can actually buy neuropterans at the hardware store. So I saw them most recently at Home Depot. They have a little... Um, cooler right at the front and you can just get a little box of lace wings and so they are in this adult stage uh, probably very young and you just take them out in early morning release them in an area where there's a lot of um, plant feeders and they will lay their eggs and those larvae will take care of things for you so you can go and release them she will lay up to 300 eggs almost twice her body weight However, there are plenty of other insects around that will eat those eggs if they find them. So she doesn't glue them directly on the plant stem. First, she produces a little drop of sticky silk. And then, at the end of that, the egg. It's suspended safely in midair. The silk is produced by glands in her abdomen in liquid form. It's the very act of pulling it out that changes it from liquid to solid. And that is true for all invertebrate silk. She will lay up to 30 eggs a day each on its own stalk. That silken thread is so incredibly fine that insect predators like these ants 
walk right by the eggs without realizing that there's a tasty meal within millimeters of them. So, despite regular ant patrols in search of food, the lacewing's eggs remain undiscovered. After three days, they begin to hatch. Now, at least, if danger threatens, her offspring will be able to help themselves by running away. All right, let me know if you have any questions.